Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back to my kitchen. That is right. We are going to be in the kitchen today. Uh, I have been making kombucha for a lot of years <laughs> and gradually getting better as I do that. So I get asked a lot of questions about kombucha. I know it seems like a really overwhelming process. And I'm gonna be honest, for me too, it seemed that way. And then kind of just as I figured out that process, realized, oh, this really isn't that overwhelming. And I just kind of want to show you guys the process that I do the first and the second fermentation um, and just walk you guys through that kind of encourage you that if you've been thinking about doing kombucha or maybe like a water kefir or something like that it can be a simple process for me like I'm kind of a visual learner so just watching someone else do it seems much more uh, feasible and attainable instead of like reading all of these instructions where I'm like oh my gosh I have no idea what's going on right now so you may be watching this video right now and have no idea what I'm even talking about <laughs> you could be like some people in my family I know anytime my dad comes over and I have like all these scoby hotels like just all around my kitchen he's like what is that and I was like oh it's kombucha and he was like okay I'm like it's a fermented tea and he's like yeah I'm not about that <laughs> So that is what it is. It is a fermented tea made from really good uh, bacteria. There's a scoby in there that feeds your tea. Uh, we will walk through that process, but it is, you know, a probiotic drink. It's really, really good for your gut health. We have incorporated it just into like our daily routine where we drink it every single day. I make them in 16 ounce bottles. I don't drink 16 ounces a day, but I try to make sure that me and the kids are drinking some. It's just really good if like, like I said, keeping your gut health healthy and then detoxing all of the bad things in there and just flushing those out. So for us, we've noticed huge improvements just by incorporating this in our diet every single day. It's also really good, especially when we're shifting seasons. It is full of antioxidants, which help kind of kill off all the bad, bad bacteria and protect the good bacteria, everything that's going on in your gut that's doing what it's supposed to do. So I've noticed that typically when we start shifting gears and shifting into cooler weather, you know, that's when we start incorporating drinking kombucha a bit more. We start adding in our elderberry syrup every single day as kind of a preventative. And so that's a real big reason why I got into doing kombucha. One, it cost way too much at the store for what I was drinking it for. It was like three, now they're around $4 a bottle depending on the brand that you do. So when I started thinking about how much money I was spending on kombucha for everyone in the family, I thought, well, I can do this myself. It just made a lot more sense for me to start making our own. We're doubling that in the cooler seasons, uh, you know, just to make sure that everything's healthy. So if you have maybe seen kombucha in the grocery store, wondering what it is, those are just some things. It's a really good probiotic. It has lots of antioxidants. Um, it helps fight against the bad bacteria in your body and promote the good bacteria in your body. Um, that's just a huge reason why we really wanted to incorporate it into our diet and we have done that for gosh probably four years now I've been making it on my own so let's take a walk into the kitchen and start diving in so I'm about to show you guys my scoby hotel but I have to tell you a story I was going to release this video back before I did the home remodel tour video and these scoby hotels which when I show you you'll understand what I'm talking about I have been growing these for years, like four years now. Whenever I first decided I was going to do this, I wanted to grow my own SCOBY instead of having to buy it. And I was in the process of making this video. I was real invested. <laughs> and I go and I put up a glass measuring cup uh, on our shelves. And it slipped out of my hand. If you guys just want to picture all of this with me. It slips out of my hand. It falls on this huge glass hotel. Vinegar and scobies go all over the counter, all over the floor. It was madness. They go into my drawers. They'd ruined all of my herbal teas. They ruined a ton of my coffee. My house smelled like vinegar for gosh, probably two weeks. We would walk in the kitchen and Nathan and I were like, oh my gosh, this is the worst smell ever. Um, so I did attempt to put this out a while back and it just did not work in my favor. So fingers crossed today, we have no accidents like that happen and we smooth sailing. All right, so here is Scobie Hotel. Um, all of these that you see right here are Scobies. I do feed this uh, periodically. But essentially what the SCOBY is, which is also what you're seeing in here, 
that is what is feeding your tea. Um, that is putting in all the good bacteria and everything like that into it. So this is actually a batch that is ready for the second fermentation, which is what I'm going to use to show you today. And then we're going to go ahead and start the first fermentation just to show you guys how simple and straightforward that, that process can be. And then we'll take this, make it ready for the second fermentation, bottle it up, and then it'll be ready in a couple days. Also, I am totally aware of how absolutely disgusting that looks, so do not let that deter you. It is a good drink. It can taste well, um, despite the madness that you just saw over there. All right, I pulled my hair back. It's getting serious around here. I will put the recipe that I'm using down below for you guys to use as well if you're going to dabble in making this. All right, so the supplies you need to get started. You are going to need a one gallon glass jar, much like this is what I'm using. Um, you're going to need one cup of cane sugar. We buy this at bulk. We buy this in bulk at like Sam's. Um, you'll need a coffee filter and a rubber band, which is what you're going to end up putting over your glass jar. Um, and you can use green tea or black tea. We use black tea and you're going to need six uh, tea bags. What we have found though is if you buy these big ones, they're about equivalent to the six and it's just much easier to deal with and mess with. Um, and then you're going to need two cups of water uh, to actually start it, which is what I've got in here. I'm going to go ahead and start boiling this. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring that two cups of water to a boil. I've got it on the stove right now. Once it starts boiling, you're going to throw your tea bag in, set the timer for 10 minutes, and then just let it steep and do what it needs to do. So the supplies that you need for the first fermentation are pretty basic. Most of them you probably have laying around your house, minus uh, the one gallon jug. I found a lot of these at yard sales. Uh, we have found lots of random things left on our farm and there was like an entire building just for, full of these glass jars as well. So I snatched those up, cleaned them really well. For your second fermentation, there are some things you're going to need um, that you will probably need to be sourcing out and thinking about now. That way you have it um, before you start that actual second fermentation. And that is your swing top glass jars. Now I buy these uh, in bulk on Amazon. We've also had some friends find some for sale and snag them for us. Um, I've made an entire list in my Amazon storefront of just like kombucha supplies um, where I get most of my things. So if you are in the market for this, I found that Amazon is just the cheapest place to source this. If you're needing a SCOBY and starter tea, which we'll talk about it may be a little uh, overwhelming to try to make your own like I did. If I could go back and redo it, I would just recommend buying it. It was a pretty low cost investment, like for like $10 or something, you could buy the SCOBY and the tea that you need to start it yourself. So please just go to that. If you have questions, make sure you just leave them below. But I've got a lot of the resources and the things that I use uh, on that Amazon storefront. All right, now that my water is starting to boil, I, I'll be honest, y'all. Usually when I'm making this, I'm kind of like always pinched on time, I feel like. So I don't let it come to a rolling boil. When I start seeing that it's doing, you know, starting to boil, I'll just go ahead, pop my tea bag in, give it a good shake, set my timer for 10 minutes, off, and I'm just going to let it sit. During this time is usually when I start gathering all the supplies and everything I need for the next step. So while that is steeping, I went ahead, measured out uh, your sugar. I went ahead and had this pre-measured out. Um, but that's just something that usually I don't, I mean, I get everything out, but I know there's enough, enough time between step one and step two where I can go while this is steeping, I can get my sugar out of here, pour into my measuring cup. Um, so don't feel like it's over. Listen, y'all, oh, I've been looking for this measuring cup all morning. <laughs> Who put it right there? That wasn't me. <laughs> I usually always end up resulting to my mason jars. Thank goodness uh, <laughs> that they have those. But I literally spent like 10 minutes trying to find that thing. One of the good things about kombucha too is it's pretty flexible. I have left that tea steeping literally all day because I started kombucha. Something else happened. I wasn't able to finish it. So that's okay. If, if that happens to you, if you get in between this and you start, you know, starting it and then you have your kids need you or maybe something else happened, you can leave that there and it'll be completely fine. It's just for this process. If you're wanting to crank it out quickly, they just say 10 minutes. If it goes longer, by all means, it is not a big deal. <laughs> all right. The timer is gone off. I'm just going to take out the tea bag 
we compost these, but of course you can just throw them in the Now we're gonna just pour our sugar in and make sure that it is fully dissolved before we start the next process. That is a pretty, pretty key thing. Sometimes I've even had to add a bit more water just to make sure that it all dissolves really well and that seems to be fine as well. So what you're gonna do now is take your gallon jar, which I just cleaned mine. Uh, we are going to add the sweet tea and sugar mixture into here, and then we're gonna take 14 cups of filtered water and fill it up. Now, when I was first doing this, I would, you know, take the 14 cups and measure. Now I know about where I need to be in this gallon jar to still add my starter tea and SCOBY and be okay. So now I just kind of eyeball it, but by all means measure out the 14 cups, especially until you get into a good routine like yourself. If you guys can see there's more sugar, I want that to be dissolved. So that's when I'm just gonna go ahead add some of that filtered water to this, shake it up really well, make sure that it's dissolving that, and then throw it back in the pot. Another thing that's kind of important is when you get your filtered water, you wanna make sure that it's cool. You're wanting to make sure that the hot tea that you've had steeping, um, you're just really kind of helping bring the temperature of that down. That way it doesn't burn the SCOBY and stuff like that. So just make sure that it's cool, kind of room temperature. All right, so this is where it can get a bit tricky, and I'm gonna try to make this seem as simple as it can. So I'm just gonna turn the camera around and show you guys real quick. All right, so I am making the starter. This is what I'm making, which means I need a SCOBY and starter culture, which is what I would recommend you guys buying. You can buy the culture and the SCOBY. So you would do this process, then the next process is you add in your starter tea and your SCOBY. Since I've already started this process, this is my starter. So I'm going to measure out about one, one and a half cups of this, which is my starter, and pour it into here with a SCOBY. Then I'm gonna take the remainder of this and make my second fermentation because it's just been through that process, if that makes sense. I know this is where it gets confusing and I'm, I'm hoping that I am, you know, explaining this well enough to where you're not confused. But what you're gonna do if you're continuing to keep a brew going is once this gets ready for your second fermentation, this will be starter. So you'll take a cup of this, you'll pour it back into another jar, and you'll start this process over. And you'll just keep pulling your starter. You only have to buy that starter once because then this is gonna be your starter, if that makes sense. As you guys can see, the color is a bit different than this. All of the things are taking place. It smells uh, vinegary like what it's supposed to. So I'm gonna take this, which is obviously more than a cup. This is probably about a cup and a half. Pour it into there. And then I've got just enough room at the top to be able to pull a SCOBY out of here, put it in there, mix it all together. Then we're just gonna add our coffee filter and our rubber band and we're gonna let it sit. One thing that's really important whenever you're messing with your SCOBY, you do not want to touch it with your bare hands. So I'm trying to find some tongs. Uh, either just use, put on a glove. If you do have to touch it with your bare hand, make sure that your hands are clean really, really well. Um, just because you don't want any bacteria getting on that SCOBY um, that's gonna make it mold or you know just not be good anymore. So my rule of thumb is I always just use a pair of tongs. Um, if I have to grab it, I usually just put on some gloves. All right, so here is the SCOBY. I know that looks gross, but this is actually just goodness. So I'm gonna pop it over into here. I may have to actually take some out because that's kind of high. It'll rise depending on how long. Now the good thing, of, and then I'm just gonna take a spoon, mix all the contents of that up really well. The good thing about SCOBYs is that they usually always create more SCOBYs, which is how you then create a SCOBY hotel. So what you would do, and this is probably gonna be another video, but this grew another SCOBY. I just detached it with the tongs. I'll throw the SCOBYs that are still in here in there and I'll just feed that with the black tea and cane sugar and water every few months. So I've went through, just poured some of this out. I'm just gonna take my coffee filter, put over the top of it. You wanna make sure that it's covered really good. Uh, we just have fruit flies and that tends to be what gets in these the worst. Um, we've even used just like if you don't have a coffee filter but you have like linen uh, cloths, you can do that as well. We do that with a lot of our stuff. You're just really wanting to make sure that 
no bugs are trying to get in there and then what I'm going to do is just take uh, this is just a chalk marker I'm gonna write on here uh, 10 6 20 that way I know when I started it because I forget oftentimes now you can let this first fermentation happen for 7 to 21 days I because we keep on a continual brew and I know how often our family drinks it around 7 to 10 days is when I'm starting that second fermentation process because 21 days is just too far but what I recommend doing is at day 7 start to taste it if it's still too sweet and it ha doesn't have that punch that kombucha has then it needs to go longer um, if it does end up you let it go too long and it's turned more to vinegar you can just add more sugar um, and then it will start to sweeten it that way and that's totally fine but I would say your first time brewing, start checking it at day seven, tasting it, seeing if it's too sweet or too sour, and then going from there. All right, so now this has a home <laughs> in my kitchen counter. So we have just got this sitting right here. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make my second fermentation because it's just went through that process. And what I'm going to do is fill these bottles with whatever fruit that I want. I will tell you from experience, the fruit matters, y'all. I wanted to do fresh fruit and to buy locally and source it out for whatever was in season. And I did that. And the fresh fruit um, had a lot more sugar. Usually when you buy frozen fruit, they're picking them, you know, when they're not quite ripe yet uh, versus if you're going to a farmer or a farm stand, you know, they're harvesting them at peakness. And I've found that the sugars in those fresh fruit seem to... Uh, activate a lot more car causing a lot more carbonation which has resulted in kombucha on my ceiling before because when I opened them they just exploded so figure out what works for you guys this is fun this is the part of kombucha that I love because I get to experiment with all sorts of things now I have resorted just to buying frozen fruit it just seems to work best with the carbonation and the sugar ratios for me personally you can try purees you can try fresh fruit and just not doing as much or you can try frozen fruit that's totally up to you today I'm going to be doing strawberry because that is my kids favorite and their request uh, but some of the flavors we've done in the past um, and we do use some seasonal things that seem to work better so like we do a cucumber lime and I use our fresh cucumbers from the garden and uh, you know so they're fine it's mainly just like your strawberries and your fruits um, that you're using you have to worry about but we've used fresh mint um, you know we've done a strawberry mint before we do a blackberry lime that tastes really good I just really encourage you guys get creative in this process I even had someone ask me if I would make a tomato one and I was like hmm I'm not sure but when last year we grew a lot of melon so we did honeydew melons uh, we did watermelons we just experimented with so many things and it was a lot of fun turns out the honeydew melon happened to be like one of my favorites all right so I couldn't find strawberries my kids are gonna be sad but I have blueberries that we had harvested earlier in the summer and some mangoes so I'm gonna do a mango blueberry one thing to keep in mind so we uh, keep the fruit in here and we drink it uh, with our kombucha but the like the top of this bottle is really small so if you are cutting up your fruit uh, just make sure it is going to swell when it gets in there so make sure that you chop it up small enough to where it fits in there and then when it swells when you add the tea that you can still get it out and then this is one of those things I just eyeball it um, I just keep sticking fruit in there until I think it seems right uh, so those are things that I think as you just do it it'll just become easier for you guys uh, as you can see, it's kind of a messy job as well. I get stuff everywhere. Usually on my kombucha making days, Nathan's like, what happened in the kitchen? It's like a bomb has went off. Um, so yeah, I'm just adding these two here. And that's what you're going to do. You're just going to add the fruit first. Um, and I'll show you guys kind of where I stop it at. And then you'll go back through and you'll add the tea. All right, so that is about how much fruit I have in there. As you can see, I'm trying to shake it out well. It's really not a lot. Um, especially when you're looking at the entire bottle as a whole um, so just to give you an idea you can play with that once you start knowing the fruits too um, that have a lot of sugar and they end up like carbonating a lot more you'll even do less but typically this is what it looks like for me and then I just take this funnel which actually came in the kit when I had bought my bottles it came with a bottle brush and the funnel so I just pop that in there 
And then I'm just gonna move it right underneath here and fill my bottle up. You also want to make sure when you are filling your bottles up, when it starts to go this part right here where the neck of the bottle starts to happen, that is where I stop. And the reason is, is if you are burping these or whatever, even when you go to open them for the first time, they are going to fizz up because they are carbonated. You've created all this magic and this goodness inside here. So that is just kind of a rule of thumb. Do not fill it up um, because then you'll have the exploding and all of those things. So what I go to do is I go through here. I'm gonna be making lots of different flavors today. I'm just gonna write on there with a glass marker what it is. Now, I am going to take this and sit it on my counter and I'm not gonna touch it for three days. After three days, I'm gonna take it and pop it in the refrigerator and what that does is it stops the fermentation process. Um, I have went through and I have done the burping and all of the things and for me, someone told me I was having issues with my bottles just exploding and when I say exploding like I would open them and they would shoot to my ceiling and I was like what is going on? So I'm a part of all these fermenting groups and they told me that I needed to quit burping them, that it just kept adding to that fermentation. It would allow the oxygen to come in and all of these other things. So I quit burping. I leave them on the counter for three days, pop them in the fridge, stops fermentation. I found that they carbonate better. They taste better. I'm not having that exploding issue anymore. And it really is just that simple. Like I said, I've got mango and blueberries. You can take this time to experiment with different flavors. And once you get into a routine of it and you start doing it and you're not having to go off that recipe book anymore you know it just seems super easy for me now I've been doing this for years I can come in the kitchen crank out kombucha really really quickly it doesn't seem like a chore so I want to encourage you if you are beginning this I know it seems overwhelming but hang in there because it does get simpler I've even taught Nathan how to do it so a lot of times if I'm not able to get to it he can get to it and the deal with kombucha is it's super is I mean it's super flexible you can keep it in that first fermentation for I mean a month if you have to and that's no big deal you can even you know the second fermentation if it goes longer or you're worried and you're going out of town just pop it in the fridge and stop the fermentation process altogether uh, it can be pretty streamlined once you get the hang of it so that is how I make kombucha first and second fermentation I will link below where you guys can have the resources um, to buy the supplies you need for this and then the recipe that I use today will also be listed below but I hope this was helpful for you guys I encourage you just try it you can do it and everyone needs like a good kombucha explosion story I feel like it's like you know your initiation into something like oh yeah I remember that one time I blew up kombucha in my kitchen <laughs> so just know it may happen but it doesn't always happen but i hope this was helpful i hope it encourages you just try it you guys can do it and it's so so much fun once you get in the hang of doing it, it just becomes fun um so if you guys have questions leave them below but thanks for hanging out with me today i'll talk to you soon